it wasn't a new story. Skid Row is not a new, um, a new thing. But um, we had gone years not really writing much about it and not addressing many of the issues. So I think it was something that needed some attention drawn to it. And in that respect, yeah, it was pretty important to do it. I, I think there's still a long way to go, though. And I think that a lot of the response, uh, unfortunately, has been um, with some of the easier stuff rather than the more um, addressing some of the more long-term solutions. The, the real fixes for what um, you see on the streets when you see people sleeping on the pavement, um, permanent supportive housing, more uh, mental health and drug and alcohol rehab, and those are the things that we still have a long way to go on and um, just hope that if we keep the spotlight on these issues that they'll get addressed at some point. And your, your personal friendship now with Nathan is, has it changed since the movie has started, since all that has started, or has it really been kind of the same? He, all he wants to do is play music, right? And um, he's happiest playing music, and um, despite whatever distractions might be going on around him, he's still interested in playing music. He, uh, I think he appreciates uh, on some level that a career that um, went off a cliff has in some form been sort of resurrected and he's getting some recognition for what was a really promising career. He's a, an extremely talented guy. If I can get him focused on one instrument, because he's, it's, and one of the things that's great about him is that he wants to play everything. He, he must have six or eight, we bought a clarinet yesterday. You know, um, clarinet, trumpet, um, upright bass, piano, violins, cello. If he could just focus on one, I think he could be brilliant on it, but he loves every he loves all kinds of music and all instruments. So he's he has re-sparked my interest in what I do for a living. And I at first so envied his passion. Because, you know, despite his challenges and issues, this man has passion in his life. And as I looked at that I envied it. And so, I thought, you know, I, I he came to my house and played for my daughter and my wife, and my daughter is four years old, just found it dazzling. She thought it was magic, and I so envied that a man has something like that that carries him through the many challenges and stages of his life. And I think, though, working on the story about him uh, reminded me that I have my own passion. I've got my own love, I mean, outside of family. I've got this thing that sustains me, and I don't want to give it up. So, so he, he just he, he just has been a gift in many ways. He's opened my eyes. And there are many frustrations in the news business right now for those of us who are old media and old fashioned. And the world is changing around us and I don't know how to do this. And um, you know, it's probably too late for me to try to learn. And so there I am doing what I do and seeing that it's sort of becoming diminished. And I thought about getting out. In fact, I thought about going into the mental health field. Um, and trying to start a second career here late in life. But I, I think knowing him and uh, becoming so um, so moved and inspired by him and this love that has been constant in his life reminded me that I really do love what I do and I want to hold on to it as long as I can. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you. Let's expand it to a few more questions. Steve Lopez, Los Angeles Times. We're here at the corner of 5th and Main, the economic and social border of downtown Los Angeles.